Welcome back to Safety Matters. This is Russ Kenzie, joined by my co-host, Tony Bean. Hello, Russ. How was your week? Oh, man, it's been a great week. Anything big going on? Yeah, I got my catalytic converter ripped off. I heard, I heard. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that happened? Yeah, I was uh, downtown in uh, by Love Field in uh, Dallas on Mockingbird and had my truck parked around the uh, in, in an open parking lot. Lots of vehicles around it, uh, apartments, uh, restaurants. And uh, 20 minutes later, when I walked back out to turn it on, it... Uh, that was it. It was a grand explosion. It was gone, huh? Gone. Yeah. <laughs> grand explosion. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> wow, we got a pretty good show today. So why don't we get right at it, huh? All right, you bet. Yeah. All right. Item number one. And this is an interesting story. This just came out last week. Did you hear about the U.S. House of Representatives Greg Stubbe fell off of a 25-foot ladder? That is a kaboozy. Think about 25 feet. That's that's a that's high. I mean, twenty five feet is two and a half stories. That's right. That's not a regular step stool. No, that's a pretty big ladder. But he fell off of a pretty big, big ladder and uh, got hurt uh-huh. pretty badly. Stubby was re- is it Stubby or Stube? Stube. Okay. Uh, was cutting tree limbs on a Sarasota property when a branch. Didn't we do a story? We did about do a it. tree Absolutely. landing on somebody I, I, in the middle of a day. All right. Anyhow, the branch hit his ladder, knocking him twenty-five feet to the ground. So I guess the ladder wasn't twenty-five feet, but he was off the ground twenty-five feet. Oh, I see. Uh, Woody, who's a field representative for uh, <laughs> Woody, <laughs> Woody uh, told the dispatcher he saw the fall. Okay, and Woody, of course, is a representative for another representative. Kind of interesting. These guys are hanging out, <laughs> sawing limbs off. Uh, but uh, at different times during the call, Stube can be heard in the background asking, what happened? So Woody told the dispatcher that uh, Stube appeared to be dazed. Okay, I'm sure He stayed on the phone with the dispatcher until first responders arrived. So what do you think happened when first responders arrived? Well, they probably did. First thing they got to do is check to see if, I mean, he probably had a concussion. Just check him out. I would say, well, what were you doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, what were you doing? Well, I fell off of a ladder. Right. It actually sounds like he fell out of the tray, but um, there he is before, and here he is after. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a fall like that, oh, my goodness. You know, at least the dogs still love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, obviously, this could have been a... Yeah. Serious fall. I mean, Absolutely. really, really bad injury. He but have uh, broke his back. He mean, broke a limb. I'm, well, anything could have happened. Said uh, Stubb's team tweeted that he was making progress and in good spirits. We are thankful That's to good. the individual who witnessed the fall and immediately called 911, as well as Sarasota County's emergency services for their quick response and transportation. This is a tweet. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Tony, in 2020, Mm-hmm. There were 161 fatal work injuries from which ladders were the primary source. Um, actually, a 5% decline from 2019, which I would assume is probably because of COVID. Yeah. A lot of people weren't getting out on ladders <laughs> <laughs> with COVID. Uh, and there was 105 deaths specifically from movable ladders, wow. five from fixed ladders. So ladders can be dangerous. Right. Um, not certain if this particular ladder was um, tied down. Right. Exactly. Not certain if there was any alcohol involved. Yeah. Um, you never know. All right. Um, but nonetheless, the guy got hurt. Right. The guy, the guy got hurt pretty badly. And uh, what can I tell you? Let's look at fatal work injuries from ladders ladders and movable ladders you know what a movable ladder is yeah right? it's like the um lifts yeah the ones on with wheels mm-hmm. but if you look at the trend uh you know quite a few people get hurt a steady number of people uh for the last six years or seven years are getting hurt on ladders yeah. uh, this is an interesting statistic here installation maintenance and repair people sure they're the ones who are on ladders probably more than anybody lights fixing gutters yep so these are the guys getting hurt the most, construction and extraction. Uh, I guess those are guys cutting trees right. when you think about it. But look all the way down at the bottom, computer engineering and science. Can you explain <laughs> what ladder? Hey, Joe, we got to get that light out. What ladder is a computer <laughs> scientist using that would cause him to be hurt seriously um, or die? Yeah. That seems like an odd industry to be impacted by uh, – Ladders, and of course, if you'll get the very bottom, 
legal, <laughs> community service, arts, and media. Sure. So a lot of folks getting hurt on uh, ladders. The uh, Industrial Safety and Hygiene News Network actually reports that a half a million falls from ladders occur annually. 97% are at home or on farms. Yeah. Did you know that? Oh, I, I was just going to say even moms that are on step stools all the time. Farms. Mm. What would what would be a farm related ladder? Well, every time you know, if you're in the if you're in the barn and you got to go to the second store, you're on a, you're on a ladder. Now you're stereotyping. Come on, <laughs> we're talking about industrial. We're talking about corporate well, farms today, <laughs> not uh, you know, not Jethro get, going up, you know, to, to, to bale hay out of the second uh, floor of the barn. All right, Russ. It doesn't matter. I mean. In general, you have to have safety with any type of equipment that you're going to use. I mean, in a in a ladder, you got to make sure that it's, you know, make sure it's locked. Right. You know, if you if it's one of those uh, retractable ladders, you know, you just make sure it's it's properly right. used. You got to make sure that the feet are properly grounded, correct? All right. And then when you uh, when you go up on top, you got to make sure you tie down. What if the ladder is broken? Or if it's, yeah, you, and then. Um, we don't know how many of these cases where the ladder was actually broken. Do you know that like uh, service trucks that go out, um, they have um, by their insurance carriers, they have to have them inspected every year. Right. So they basically get new ladders every year. Okay. So uh, how does that work? Inspected. Who's inspecting these ladders? Um, usually they, you know, they, they do their own inspections, but if they, um, it's mandated that they, if they're. They pretty much buy new ladders every year mm. because they know that they they get such abuse. And uh, you, you know, ever hear of an OSHA ladder? No. Well, they call them OSHA ladders. That probably not their official name, but these are ladders that are color coded to to be weight bearing. Gotcha. And so um, you have ladders that can bear up to three hundred pounds. Sure. That's typical. Sure. And uh, ladders that uh, bear two hundred pounds. Sure. And if you ever go to like the Home Depot or you Lowe's, can see it. yeah, you can see that the blue ladders are the lighter. Usually, duty. I get the I get the lighter ones for right. me. Right. So it's a little bit different, <laughs> but it makes you wonder. I mean, looking at the data. Yeah. Um, you know, you bring up a good point. If you're a pretty good sized guy, like <laughs> like some people, <laughs> like, like me, <laughs> say you say you say you come in at a couple hundred pounds. Yeah. Uh, and you're carrying you're carrying a lot of stuff. Yeah, you're carrying tools. You know. you know, you got you got drills, and you got you know, you got your little halter on. You know, where <laughs> nails, screws, or your uh, did you say halter? Or you know, a little. <laughs> <laughs> where are we, where are we working? What are we working on? <laughs> your halter. <Well. laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, they're tool gotcha. bags. You know, you got your tool. You got your tool. Yeah. You know. All right. Well, say you're carrying stuff up. You weigh a couple hundred pounds. Now right. you're up to two fifty. Sure. Pretty easily. If you got sure. like cans of paint. Right. That ladder is only rated for three hundred pounds. Right. So, I wonder if that has anything to do with these statistics. But if you look at it, it says more than two point one million people needed to be hospitalized. About twice the overall admission rate for consumer product related industry injuries, and that's from uh, PubMed. Med. Yeah. Yeah, so there's 2. a lot of point one million. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people getting hurt. So, um, you know, what can I tell you? And yeah, we got another topic for you. Topic number two, and this came up just this past week. Great oh. white, yeah, great white shark decapitates Mexican diver, marking first fatal shark attack of 2023. The report was that the great white shark was 19 feet long. Do do do. According to witnesses, 19 <laughs> feet long. <laughs> it's a 19 foot long. Mike, it's a big shark, man. That's a great white. Decapitated him. So I guess it went right for the head. You know, you hear a lot about shark attacks. Wasn't there like a program on the History Channel or something called Shark Week? Yeah, yeah. It's always about sharks, and these sharks are killing people. And okay, when you go into their habitat, they are meat eaters. They're Right, the top of the food yeah, chain and the, sure. the ocean. In the, yeah, with the orcas as well. And we're kind of going to their terrain, yeah. um, wanting to swim. Or in this case, he was actually working. Uh, I don't know if you know the background, but it's a Fox News report that this gentleman was actually, um, and by the way, his name is Manuel Lopez, was diving for mollusks in Mexico's Tabari Bay in the Gulf of California. He encountered a 19-foot great white shark. 
at a depth of about 50 feet. 11.30 in the morning, right before lunch. I guess it was lunchtime for the shark. <laughs> Um, if you go into trackingsharks.com, which is kind of an interesting website, um, it gives you like an update on where sharks are feeding. Sure. Uh, two other fishermen who were with Manuel uh, at the time of the attack said that he was decapitated. Uh -huh. He was diving when the animal attacked him, ripped off his head and biting both shoulders. My Jose goodness. Bernal said... Uh, speaking for the fishermen about the attack. So this is definitely a occupational injury. I sure. mean, he was on the job. He was a diver. That's what he did for a living. I wonder, well, of course, this did happen in Mexico, and they don't have OSHA in uh, Mexico. But no. um, you know, think about that when you, you go to the market to eat seafood. Somebody had to, somebody had to risk their life you yeah. know, to, uh, to get that food for you, and this gentleman lost his life, but it was the first uh, shark attack of and death of 2023. Um, you know, according to Bernil, said that divers in the area had previously been warned about these shark presences in the area. Here we go. And that most divers had not been out on the water in the days leading up to the attack. So there was kind of a, it was kind of a heads up. Sure. You know? um, they were warned. Yeah, there's the sharks in the area. Um, maybe we can't go in, but these guys aren't diving. They're not making money. Yeah. And so he said, hey, don't worry about it. I do it all. It's usually the case, yeah. right? And so Lopez re was reportedly diving with a surface supplied air source. That's basically a hose uh, that, com that has a compressor that pumps air through the hose connected to the divers, also connected to the boat. And so um, question for you. Mm. Question for him. It's going to be a good question for him. How many people each year will die from a shark attack? How many people each year, on average, will die from a shark attack? Five, C, 11, 27. 27 or 42. How many people do you think it's going to be? 27. And you get that from? I don't know. It's just a guess. That's not okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. We're going to have to buzz you in there. Sorry. <laughs> no, that didn't quite work. But 42. What do you really think it is? 42. You think it's 42? So you're, you're going to err on the side of going up. Yeah. Hey, according to the Florida Museum in 2019, there were 64 reported cases of unprovoked shark attacks worldwide. There you go. Keep in mind that this number is much likely to be lower than what really happened between people and sharks in the ocean during the year. As Gavin Naylor, director for the Florida Program for Shark Research, stated to the BBC, most reports of shark attacks come from highly developed countries that have large populations and have a lot of people watching the nightly news. Think about that. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're from a third world nation and something bad really happens. They don't. They don't report it. How would you know? Nope. How would you know? Yeah. So when I say, uh, you know, developed countries... It makes a lot of sense. So yeah. they anticipate there's probably a lot more, but they don't sure. really know. That being said, of the 64 shark attacks that were reported in 2019, five. Ah, so five it's a lower number. Five killed somebody, yeah. So five is pretty much the magic number there. Um, you'd, you'd think it would be more. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was too. You'd think it'd be more that because um, you hear about it a lot. Right. But the fact is it's not that many. I guess they don't. They don't like human humans. They bite them and then they don't. I think that's obvious. Yeah, they yeah. don't, they they don't, don't like, like divers. Bah, like that. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's probably not salty. You know, like most of the fish. That's true. <laughs> that's true. So they're, they're expecting it to be. You know, you know. Hey, tastes like chicken. <laughs> All right, item number three for today, and this is going to be another interesting story. You may have heard about this. This is from Apple News. Getting nails done frequently, finger and toe nails, could actually damage your DNA in your hands. Studies fine. Yeah. Dermatologists explain what you need to know about UV lights and your health. Now, you seem like the kind of guy that's kind of a nail guy. Oh, yeah, sure. You kind of do the pedicure? Yeah. You Pam, do the manny? That's Pam in there, honey. Yeah, yeah. 
You're, oh, no, no, it was in Pledge. It. Oh, Pledge. <laughs> and it was, no, it was Pam. Pam. <laughs> so, where, they, where she has the, you know, little fingers no, in the dish. No. You're yeah, soaking in it, honey. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, as a guy that gets the Manny Petty, I don't know how it, how concerned you no, are about this. No, but I this. do get pedicures, man. I mean, I, I got know. those big toes, man. Oof. Got to get them. Sausage feet. <laughs> All right, so (laughs) the big sausage feet. But get get a little of this. New research shows that UV nail polish dryers typically used to cure gel manicures. Um, Do you you get gel manicures? No. You don't get a fill or anything like that? (laughs) No, but my uh, my daughters and my wife do. I'm almost positive. Mm, Gels are the big thing right now. Are they? Yeah. Anyhow, dermatologists explain that UV dryers are, you know, really... Better to protect your hands. Gel manicures can be a great lasting option for nails. They practically guarantee chip-free digits. But new research shows that frequent gel manicures with UV nail polish dryers can damage your skin. Mm. So what do you think of that? Didn't know about it. Yeah, I didn't know about that either. Uh, I don't get my nails done. That's probably why. The (laughs) the, uh, study published by Nature Communication shows that getting your nails done frequently... I know what frequently means. Once a week, once a month. Um, how often do you get your nails done, Tom? What do <laughs> we have? We on a scale? No? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean by getting your nails done. It goes on to say that, you know, exposing those digits to UV light to cure the gel manicure is damaging your DNA in your hands, which could lead to skin cancer. Yeah. So ultraviolet rays are, of course, known to cause skin cancer. Didn't we do a story about UV light and skin cancer and sun blockers? A and, and long time ago. Remember we did that? We talked about what's the chances of getting, or, or do sun blockers actually work? Oh, that's right. And they actually didn't work. No, they remember? don't. They actually can create cancer that's because right. the ingredients in sun block, sun lotion. Sure actually can lead to bigger problems. I agree. Anyhow, it says if you're going to get your nails done, they put you under the UV light, which is marketed as safe, with nothing to be concerned about. Oh, I like that. That's a great one. Yes. Nothing to see here. Uh-huh. Nothing to see here. Those fingers will feel fine tomorrow. Just a little bit of ice. You're in good shape. I do remember how many times I. it's like every Sunday watching the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, with the Cowboys, that, that happens quite a bit. <laughs> Nail biting. Anyhow, so uh, get a load of this. We have a professor of bioengineering. Good for him. Alexandro, a professor of bioengineering, cellular and molecular medicine at UC San Diego. Sure. And author of the study said, uh, the best way to our knowledge, uh, but to the best of our knowledge, no one has actually studied these devices and how no. they affect human cells at the molecular level and cellular levels until now. Well, you know what's interesting about that is they're marketing it as safe, but there's no research yeah. to support the fact that it's safe. So I wonder what the manufacturer is looking at. What is actually the uh, source of that information? Huh. Internal. That safe. They're yeah. Safe. Trust us. It's marketing. Trust us. Yeah. Marketing. Exactly. Anyhow, they looked at these populations, human cells, uh, and they found that just using this device for one 20-minute session led to 20 to 30% death rate. Wow. Yeah. Well, three consecutive 20-minute exposures caused between 65 and 70% of the exposed cells to die. When I say death rate, that, that I don't mean the person. It's the skin gotcha, cell. Gotcha, gotcha. There we go. It's on about a, UV on light. a molecular level. Yeah, about UV light. So, all right, you ready for it? You ready for the solution? All right, what's the solution? Here it is. This is what they're doing. <laughs> they now have gloves that you wear. That protect. Protect you from UV light. So, just your very, very, you know, just the fingernails sure. are, um, are exposed and you don't have the... UV light, you know, penetrating through the skin of your of your hands. So well, they came up with a solution. I think that's great. Yeah. Now it's safe, I guess. That's right. You know, those gloves, um, when you look at them, they're, you they're like kind them. of a, well, is that the kind of like the back in the, the like the Andy Griffith <laughs> or the hobo? Yeah. Remember? Wore that type of glove, you know, with the, the fingerless glove. <laughs> and he would with always the, do this with the, with the top the, hat. With the cigarette. Yeah, and the, the top hat, mustache. right. So I guess there's a application for um, for these gloves today. So, uh, yeah, yeah next, next time you get your fingernails done, Tony, you may want to think about it. I so. will. And item number four on our 
list of the top four today, January 30th. Again, this is from Texas last month. PBS, PBS last week. Yeah. New alcohol research shows drinking small amounts of alcohol can be harmful to your health. Um, Ross, no more drinking that vino. Okay. So, all right. Um, I thought vino was safe. Yeah, a glass right? of wine. What happened? It's not safe anymore? I don't know. When did vino become unsafe or alcohol in general? I don't know. Let's see. What the, let's let's read on. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> Dr. Tim Naimi, he's an alcohol epidemiologist. Didn't know they had those people. <laughs> and a director of University of Victoria's Canadian Institute for Substance Use Research. Well, alcohol is one of the leading behavior-related causes of health problems and deaths. And also some social problems and economic costs. I guess that's... <laughs> yeah, driving. Yeah. I mean, being an alcoholic <laughs> destroys your life, destroys... I mean, it's really a horrible that's disease. That's right. It does. It's not funny. So you have um, injuries, accidents, cancers, uh, cardiovascular disease. I think it also affects, like... Like your liver, right? People right. have that drink a lot get like sclerosis of the sure, sure, liver. Sure, sure. And so there's a lot of bad side effects of alcohol. That, sure. That's for sure. Um, and so it causes a wide range of health effects. And of course, those have been appreciated high to high levels of consumption, but even for some lower levels as well. This is the thing that's a little surprising. When it comes to health, less is more, and that's actually the main the main message stemming from the Canadian guidelines. Now, I find this kind of interesting that the Canadians are talking about <laughs> not drinking. Okay, now, you've been to Canada? Uh, yes. Okay, they like to drink. They, they sure a, do. They like to drink. And it's they cool. like the beer. It's it's cold. Yes. Uh, they like their Canadian whiskey, right? Yes, yes. Um, so the Canadians are now saying, "Hey, you got to be mindful." But as um, little as two drinks per week. Think about that. Think as, about that. As little as two drinks a week. Two drinks per week. And I guess when you say a drink, that would just be a glass of wine. Yeah, but it doesn't say that. Two drinks per week. Like you know, okay. Let's let's okay. It's a different. If you're talking about two drinks, you just. You're uh, doing 80 proof whiskey versus 12 proof glass of wine. Mm. Big difference, don't you think? I think. Maybe. Question is to the Canadians. <laughs> Canadian guidelines. <laughs> Canadian guidelines. Big point is no matter what level you drink at, the con consuming less will be good for your health. And we really want to reach out to people. Um, we're talking about the public health community broadly. And not just people who are already drinking a little bit and might cut back further. Mm. They're really talking about in this study, Tony, people mm. that if you're drinking six or seven drinks a day, that's what I would call an alcoholic. There you go. Oh, yeah. Um, bring it down to three or four, which is still a lot. Yes. That'd be fantastic for your health. So it, the study is a little misleading. I agree. What is a drink? Sure. Don't know. Right. Um, three to four is better than eight. Oh, Okay, but right. that's still a lot. Right. I mean, we're still talking about a lot of consumption. Right. Then you talk about percentage, like you said, you know, right. twelve percent by volume versus right. you know, one hundred and fifty percent. You know, yeah. that's usually, Jim, Jim Bean. You know, yeah, that's when your vision goes to. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's a that's a health problem. Yeah, drinking moonshine. Yeah, I, I think they have to be a little bit more clear on that. Yeah, and again, it's a little misleading. So. Um, you know, it's a class one carcinogen, cancer causing uh, sure. drug. Uh, the WHO, World Health Organization. Oh, boy. And every time I see those letters put together. Yeah, I know. Mm. And it ain't the rock group from no. the 60s. I question the data. I agree. The WHO has lost a lot of credibility. I concur. So here we are. Here we are. So they're now causing, uh, they're saying, and this is interesting. I don't know if I buy this. Like one drink of alcohol has the same. Cancer causing potential as one or two cigarettes, depending on your sex. Hmm. I'd, you like, to, I'd like to see that study. I wonder how they did that study. Yeah. Where is that coming from? I have no idea. A drink it's, is equal to a cigarette. It's just like natural gas. Hmm. You know? Cooking with gas. It's cooking been with Cooking with AOC <laughs> <laughs> and Jill Biden. Um, so, all right, well, let's take a look at it. Oh, uh, yeah. um, hmm. 
they go on to talk about risk of breast cancer goes somewhere between 8 and 10% increases with each additional drink that a woman consumes per day on average. So that's an important thing. Yeah. I could tell you one thing. My wife definitely likes wine. Yeah. Uh, doesn't drink that much, but she could if I did. See, I don't like to drink wine. Yeah. I'm not a wine guy. Yeah. Um, so I'm not a, you know, I'm more of a scotch guy, right? Yeah, you know, everybody wants to go out to the bar, you know, and do the scotch. But when you go to eat. Yeah. Right. Come on, Tony, you're Italian. You like the, you like the two fingers or the three fingers? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you're, you're, um, you're Italian. I mean, Italians drink wine. Like well, let me tell you, my grandmother who lived to be 100 would drink a glass of wine every night for, with dinner. And that's what she always said, that it was good for you. But Your grandmother told you that. I, yeah. Okay. Well, according to this study, if you read the last paragraph here, it says that uh, many people remember being told that moderate amounts of drinking for certain people can be beneficial. Again, not certain what certain people are. Yeah. And there was the infamous study years ago that said red wine was good for your heart. Hmm. I've always believed that. Me too. I thought red wine is good for your heart. I think so. I thought drinking a glass of red wine a day was like therapeutic. Yeah. And, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. How bad could it be? That's right. How bad could it be? But uh, anyhow, the study went on. Even for, those, even, even for those studies about a very small amounts of alcohol, the risk started to increase. Again, don't know what small amounts they're measuring. Yeah. Teaspoons. And uh, probably the best line is that without getting into the deep weeds, the basic idea, basic idea there is to, uh, you know, if you're a red wine drinker in your 50s who's been drinking just a small amount for the, your whole life, life is actually, you know, Somebody that people tend to be super healthy, uh, have a lot of social advantages, and maybe red wine is a reflection of that, but yeah. not its cause. And that's the basic problem with the previous research on that. So what they're really trying to get at is everything we've been told, everything that we just life experience is wrong. Uh, can't drink alcohol, period. Um, you know, it just seems like every time I turn around, there's some safety scare tactic going on to, um, you know, warn warn people of yeah. the dangers of everything. Yeah. You know, no matter what you do, right. it's really dangerous. Have you, right. have you caught that? Yes, absolutely. And if you're going to put out studies like that, you also have to also show other studies that have done so you can do a really good comparison. What we see all time in... I mean, every day, as they, it's all this wham, this wow factor. Yep. Get it out there. This fear factor. Get it out there because it it hits the headlines. Yep. Sensationalism. And it and it really doesn't get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Uh, again, this is a study came out published. That's uh, why we're talking about it. That deals with safety. Drinking right. wine and alcohol is unsafe. Um, they say it pretty much at all levels. Well, quantities. Mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of risk. Now, I'm always questioning who funds the study. Right. Um, who conducted the study. Right. What was the basis of the study. Right. Because um, a lot of these terms that they used are very, uh, very vague. You know, They're small, vague. Small quantities. Small exactly. quantities. What's a small and, quantity? And they, don't, and they don't define it. And they don't define right. the, uh, I mean, if you're going to do something like that, you're going to have to do it based on categories and, right. you know, again, the content. I mean, and then generalization on the wine, uh, yeah. it just doesn't make sense. I'm not buying it. Me neither. Anyhow, that's all we got on today's episode. Is there anything you wanted to get off your chest? No, no. Um, we had um, safety news. By the way, what did you do about the catalytic converter? Um, I don't know. It's probably on its way to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning the truck is being <laughs> no. yeah, towed? The, no, the truck is, uh, it's in, oh. it's got to get fixed. Mm. And then, it, and then it's going to make its way to the next. That was my baby. I mean, it was. For, I had it for eight years. Went from like a hundred and eighty-seven thousand to two hundred and sixty-seven thousand. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, it made you very happy, Tony. You yeah. got you got a lot of life out of it. Yeah. So uh, now you have a new truck. Yes. Mm. Okay. Well, 
Thanks for the catalytic converter. <laughs> you know, we need to do a do an episode on that. What's okay. the what's the safety of uh, driving a truck in uh-huh. Dallas, downtown <laughs> Dallas, near Love Field, uh, and having your catalytic converter sawed off? Yeah, yeah. Well, well all righty. Another week. Another week. Another good show. So, anyhow, this is Russ Kenzie, or you've been listening to Safety News with uh, myself and my co-host, Tony. And uh, until next week, have a safe day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. And be safe. And be safe. Thanks, Tony.